Hi everyone, in today's episode, how I revive my almost dead rat by giving it something new to chew on. Uh, by replacing the old battery from its power cell. My name is Edward and I tinker with things. Hi again, how do I did it? This is like the original power cell looks. First, I took a pointy little thing. Not a sharp blade, I'll explain later why not. So, a pointy little thing and I drew it over the joint of the two halves of the power cell case. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. from time to time trying to crack open the case. But easy and with care. You don't want the pointy little thing to pierce your fingers. Anyway, after 4-5 rounds of doing that, you should be able to crack the case. You can notice that this one it was already open before. I didn't want to make a fool of myself on tape in case this didn't work. When it's ready to be open, note that you should keep the half with the contacts face down because the battery is connected to those contacts. And voila, the case is open. Battery parameters 3.7 volts, 440 milliamps hour, made on September 13, 2010. Ouch. And this is why I haven't used a sharp cutter or something like that. It's because of that lip and reverse lip that are on the interior of the case. If I had used a cutter, those would have been cut. Now, by using the pointy little thing, I can still take advantage of the original construction of the case and not use any glue after replacing the battery. The case will stick well okay unless you decide to play football with the battery pack after that, which I really don't want to do. So it should be fine like this. Those are the contacts from the case and how the battery is connected. For the replacement, I got an ultra-fire rechargeable battery, link for the site I get it from in the description. But you can use any batteries from anywhere as long as they are of the same type and have the similar parameters. This one is of 3.6 volts, close enough to the original one and 600 milliamps hour, which is better than the original one. It fits perfectly in the case. It even has some little slack for the extra wire. I'll show you later which wire. So we can continue to... The funny part. Actually replacing the battery. You'll need the new battery, Stuff to hold the battery in case you need two hands. This was a little bit of overkill. You don't need this monstrosity. You can use anything can keep the battery in place, like a pair of conveniently chosen pliers with some rubber band over the handles perhaps. You'll also need a soldering iron and the auxiliary stuff like solder and flux. Okay, now to prepare the battery. Put some flux on both ends.
and then solder. Please keep in mind that batteries don't generally like high temperatures. You can damage them by doing that. They even can catch fire or explode. Like the ones from that mobile phone I wanted to buy. Oh my god! And those I have are called Ultra Fire! Abort! Abort! Eh, just kidding. Just be sure that you keep the soldering iron as less as possible in contact with the battery. If you don't want to damage it. A good idea might be to sand the battery contacts with a fine sandpaper before applying the flux. Thing that I don't do here. Oh well. Now, the helping hand, which was not too helpful here. It's not working. Aha! Uh -huh. That should be enough. Oh yes, you will also need some wires, some small not too thick wires. Measure the length of the battery and add about one more centimeter. It's good like that. Oops, I forgot. Maybe you need some cutting pliers too. Cut it, cut it. Put some solder on the wire ends, but first twist the end a little bit. You don't want the wires to fan like a broom. Now the helping hand was really helpful. A little bit out of focus, but helpful. Soldering the wire for minus end. Yeah, it's good. A little bit too long maybe, but we will use the extra wire to fill the gap between the case and the battery. You'll see. And now for the second wire. We will need one extra short wire. A half centimeter maybe? Let's solder the first end first. Hey, hey, twist it, twist it. Good. Cut 
and solder the other end. Because the wire is very short, be sure you're not burn your fingers. And use a pair of tweezers or small nose pliers for God's sake. Don't do what I'm doing. We are now ready to connect the new battery. But not until the dead old one is removed. The minus wire from the old battery, which is connected to the middle terminal, has an insulator tube. Slide that before detach the wire. You can also use the insulator when you connect the new battery, which I did. I like to reuse stuff as much as possible. And the old battery is out. Try not to short the wires. There might be some juice left in there. Now it's time to connect the new battery. As said, I like to reuse, so first I inserted the minus wire into the tube insulator. Then solder. Slide the insulator over the terminal. And make sure that the middle minus terminal is not touching its neighbors, the plus terminals. As earlier said, it's better to have a little bit longer minus wire, because we will use it to fill the gap between the case and the battery. Now, to attach the plus wire. Again, be smart and use a pair of tweezers if you have, or if you are not lazy as I am. It can make your life much easier. as you can see. Finally, the plus end of battery is connected to the one plus terminals. Slide the battery inside. Use the minus wire to fill the gap.
and prepare another short wire to make the bridge between the two plus connectors from the sides. Again, short wire, be smart, use tweezers. Make sure that the plus wire bridge is not making electrical contact with the minus wire or minus terminal. This step is optional if you are really, really sure by visual inspecting the contraption that the minus and plus wires are not touching each other. Anyway, if you have a multimeter, I strongly recommend you to do this check. So, put your multimeter on a scale that includes 3.6 volts. I'm just checking here what a battery out of the box should show. It's 3.88 volts. Our battery from the power cell case should show similar value. Remember, middle connector is minus, side connector are both plus. Checking for both combinations. So, it's okay. We can now close the case, check for the right position and you should be able to snap the two halves. The bound between the two pieces should be strong enough. If not, you can always use some glue to keep them in place. I'm not going to do that. I'm happy with how they stick together and I want to be able to open the cases again in the future. By the way, in case you haven't figured it out, Rat is the name of my mouse. No, no, not that mouse. The one that it's attached to the computer. Actually this is not really attached, that's why it has a battery. You confuse me. Now everything is done. It's time for some Fallout 76, yes! <laughs> we have an update. That's good, I think. What? It requires another 50 gigs of free disk space? But I don't have another 50 gigs. Urgh!